Hey everyone, it's Brenda Lee Turner from LeanSecrets.com and today I wanted to talk to you about 10 reasons you may want to consider stopping the coffee habit. Reason number one is adrenal fatigue. Strong, healthy adrenals allow you to have a wonderful life where you wake up, you're full of energy, you just are ready to take on the day, but when your adrenals are overtaxed, by the excessive amounts of stress that coffee will put on them, you're gonna wake up feeling like absolute crap, might I say, excuse the language, and you're gonna need that coffee to give you a boost. Adrenals are little things that are less than the size of your thumb, and they produce norepinephrine and epinephrine, which are really important, but if you have too much norepinephrine and epinephrine, then your body is gonna be all out of whack overstressed, overtaxed. Couple the stress that coffee automatically induces in your body with the natural stressors of things like having overdue bills, children running around coloring on the walls or whatever else stresses you, you have compounded this stress, your adrenals are exhausted. When you're in level three adrenal fatigue, which could very well happen from coffee abuse, then you don't feel like cooking, you don't feel like going to work out, it just sucks your energy right out of you. Reason number two to stop drinking coffee is that it raises your cortisol levels to an extremely high, pointless extent. It's so pointless to sit at your desk and have these cortisol levels, stress hormones, raise through the roof and just be sitting there. And cortisol is also directly and positively correlated with abdominal fat. Those who drink over 300 milligrams of caffeine per day have a raised cortisol level for 18 out of the 24 hours. Reason number three is that it's bad for your brain and for your mood and for your psychological well-being. One of the main reasons for this is that it disrupts serotonin. Serotonin regulates your mood, regulates your sleep cycles and your appetite. Another way that coffee is bad for your brain is by interfering with adenosine receptors. Adenosine receptors receive different things, different signals, and when they're blocked with caffeine, then that can screw a whole lot up. One of the main things I wanted to mention about adenosine being disrupted is GABA. You aren't able to receive GABA because your adenosine is blocked by caffeine. GABA is a calming, soothing, Ah, zen kind of neurotransmitter and you don't get that. Reason number four is that women detoxify caffeine and coffee more slowly than men. And it also varies depending on the time of the month. You might have a cup of coffee coursing through your body at noon and you're thinking, ugh, like I'm tired, I need more coffee, but really you haven't finished detoxifying the first cup you already had. By the time that you're at the end of the day, you have a cumulative buildup of all this caffeine, you can't sleep, your sleep's disrupted, you got increased PMS. Caffeine will exacerbate PMS for many, many women, so keep that in mind. If you're having terrible PMS and the only thing you think makes it better is drinking a lot of coffee, maybe try not drinking a lot of coffee at all throughout the whole month and see if that makes it any better. Reason number five is that it stresses your liver. Coffee and caffeine are only detoxified by your liver. So just keep that in mind. Your liver is very important in the function of your metabolism. So we're, we're blocking up the liver with way too much caffeine. That's gonna affect your metabolism, your hormones, all different types of stuff. So keep that in mind. But it actually robs your energy. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Essentially, you're borrowing energy from your body at an interest rate. A lot of people think that when they drink coffee, they are getting energy from coffee, but that's a misconception. Coffee does not give you energy. What it gives you is a state of stress. And that leads me right into number seven, which will probably interest most of you quite a bit, is that coffee can actually prematurely age you. And it does this through reducing DHEA. DHEA is a hormone that is associated with youth, sex drive, nice skin, and just being young, you'll have high DHEA levels. And they start to decline a little bit uh, when you're like, 25, 26, 27, but if you really want to decrease and absolutely diminish your DHEA levels, just drink tons and tons of caffeine and coffee all the time. DHEA is produced by your adrenal glands. So 
you can see how this is all one big circle, right? If your adrenal glands are totally fatigued and shot, some people call it adrenal pause, then you're not going to be producing optimal levels of DHEA. Reason number eight, which I feel ties very strongly with the last reason, is that coffee can disrupt your sleep and reduce the quality of sleep. So some people will say, I can drink 10 cups of coffee, go right to sleep, and just feel totally fine. Coffee doesn't affect me anymore because I've built a tolerance to it. Well, first of all, that is a very bad sign that you are probably in some level of adrenal fatigue. But secondly, I'm not talking about insomnia. I'm not talking about your lack of ability to fall asleep. If you have a tolerance of caffeine, you'll be able to fall asleep, but the quality of your sleep is probably diminished. Coffee can actually reduce that deep sleep level, that stage four sleep, the rejuvenating sleep that makes you feel awake when you wake up. So you'll wake up and you'll feel like, yes, I just had a beautiful night's sleep. Reduce your coffee intake or totally diminish your coffee intake if you want to have more restful, peaceful, deep sleep. Reason number nine is that it increases your blood sugar. And this also, by the way, increases insulin. Both of these things are inflammatory for your body, very bad for fat loss, and very bad for overall just health. For those of you thinking, wait a minute, I don't put sugar in my coffee, I drink in black, it can still increase your blood sugar because your body's in a state of stress or fight or flight. So when your body's in fight or flight mode, it's going to think logically, wait, uh, Brenda needs Brenda needs some sugar. We gotta unload the sugar into her bloodstream so she can run from that lion or whatever is chasing her, or whatever's causing her to feel this fight or flight thing. And then after a little bit, you've got this excess sugar in your blood. You got the state of hyperglycemia. So your body then responds by releasing insulin, which is a fat storing hormone. And insulin also cleans up the excess blood sugar. And then what happens is you have very low blood sugar from the insulin. And then you feel like crap, you fill in that dip, then you go for another cup of coffee. This is the coffee roller coaster ride. Last reason, reason number 10, is that it's a health robber and it can rob you of very important vital nutrients in your body like iron. Uh, it interferes with the absorption of iron. It also diminishes B vitamins and thiamine through your urine, and it also can reduce your body's magnesium, potassium, and other very important minerals and nutrients. Ooh, I know you guys hated this video, but it had to be made, it had to be said. I am so sorry. In the interest of full disclosure, I myself being a reformed coffee addict, I do not want any of this to be true. I wish with all my might that it wasn't true, that good, good old cup of joe could be in my hand right now while I talk to you guys because I love coffee so dearly. I really, really do. And I love the way that it makes me feel for about an hour, but after that, forget it. I hate the way that it makes me feel after. You can replace your coffee with lower caffeine containing products like green tea and yerba mate. The reason I recommend green tea is because it's actually giving your body something. You can fight free radicals with green tea. You can also reduce inflammation in your body and it actually tastes pretty good. All right guys, if you have any questions about today's video or you wanna tell me how much you hate me for it, you can talk to me down there in the comments below. And also, you can join me on Facebook or Twitter. And if you wanna keep the party going, you can always check out leansecrets.com for more information on how to get lean, firm, and toned. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.